baseball child advocacy and the role of CCS? Uh, Dr. Lana had mentioned earlier that I would talk on EPSDT and CHDP. Um, briefly, EPSDT is the Early Periodic Screening Diagnostic and Treatment Program. It's the federal well screening program um, in the Medicaid program. Here in California, it is known as the CHDP, Child Health and Disability Prevention Program. Uh, CHDP is part of uh, the Children's Medical Services Program. The other half of that is CCS. And I'll spend um, the bulk of my time talking about um, CCS. The CHDP program uh, expects primary care physicians to be doing the developmental surveillance as part of their routine um, activities. The CCS program comes into play as once you've done the screening, you've identified a child that needs a referral, and then there's confusion on where to send that child. Today, we are um, all here representing various disciplines as child advocates. And our society did not always have uh, a group of child advocates like ourselves. Uh, in fact, you may be interested to know that uh, before there was a Children's Protective Services, we had a Society for the Protection for, Against Cruelty to Animals, and that the first child abuse case was based on laws that were designed to protect animals. Um, I'm sure, as you all know, that this weekend is the opening weekend for the baseball season, and I'm going <coughs> to attempt to show you that we are here as child advocates partly because of baseball and the history of baseball. And this is George. George was born in Baltimore and was incorrigible. And his parents, when he was seven years old, placed him into St. Mary's Industrial School, um, which was a Catholic prison. It was literally a lock facility and they had sports um, that they would offer the children. Um, back in the 1914, um, baseball was really the dominant sport in our, in our country. Next. George uh, was a pitcher, a very good pitcher. And in 1914, uh, the owner of the Baltimore Orioles approached the priest who ran this reform school and said, I, I would really like to offer a contract to George. And the priest said, well, I'm sorry, we can't do that because the agreement we had with the parents when they placed him at age seven was that we would keep him till 21. I says, well, what can I do to solve that problem? Because we're going to have to adopt him. So in 1914, when George was 19 years old, Jack Dunn adopted him to, so he could play in the minor league system. And his fellow owners in the minor league system made a joke about Jack Dunn's baby. And this individual became known as Babe. And you probably have heard him as Babe Ruth. Next. Babe Ruth was a pitcher for a number of years in the Red Sox system. And in 1917, they won the World Series. In 1918, they won the World Series. He actually set a record for consecutive scoreless innings pitched and during that time that lasted for almost 50 years. But at the end of 1918, the owner of the Red Sox needed money, and so he made the ill-fated decision to sell him to the New York Yankees. Next. Uh, the Red Sox would not win another World Series for 86 years. The New York Yankees had never won a World Series. In 1920, the New York Yankees became quite popular. In fact, they drew over a million fans that year. Next. George turned out, they turned out to be a much better hitter than a pitcher, and so he started hitting home runs, and people started coming to watch him. Next. And they came by the thousands, the tens of thousands. He would go on exhibitions. He was literally the most popular individual in the United States in the 1920s. Next. He was diagnosed with uh, esophageal cancer after he uh, retired from baseball 
and this was his um, farewell in New York Stadium. Uh, 60,000 people um, showed up. Um, he was to die soon after this. Over 100,000 people turned up for his memorial service. You know, what does this have to do with child advocacy? Next. Babe liked children, and he visited children in hospitals. And this particular visit became quite famous in 1926 because this child who was dying with leukemia, he told the child that he would hit a home run for her, and the next day he did hit a home run. This is 1926. Next. In 1927, the Crippled Children's Services Program in California was founded. Now, you probably think CCS stands for California's complex system, but <laughs> my belief is that a whole host of services started because of Babe Ruth. In 1930, the American Academy of Pediatrics was founded, due in part to this, this interest in helping children who were not being served. And in 1935, Title V of the Social Security Act was created to promote and improve maternal and child health nationwide. Um, this remains the longest acting public health legislation in our nation's history. Next. So CCS is composed of two programs. We have a medical treatment program that you are all familiar with. Children with leukemia and congenital heart disease can get their treatment paid for. The other component is, is a little bit more confusing, the medical therapy program. Next. The, the eligibility is based on several factors. You have to have the right diagnosis, which is part of the confusion. You have to reside in Ventura County, or you have to intend to reside in Ventura County. And then there are some financial um, criteria. Interestingly, in the medical therapy program, there are no financial criteria. It is solely based on diagnosis. So a child with cerebral palsy from a family making $500,000 a year can get the physical therapy and the occupational therapy provided for. Next. Um, referrals to the CCS program can come from just about anyone, really, from you, from parents, from schools. Um, family has to complete a, an application. This is actually part of the complexity because we, they're required to fill out uh, financial information and taxes and sometimes they get a referral and the parents don't complete the application for months. And we get blamed for not providing services when it really is just a paper issue. Next. Um, <clears throat> You know, the information I told you about Babe Ruth, I did not make up. That was all true. And this information that you're going to hear about CCS, I also did not make up. Um, this is taken right out of Title 22, which is the regulations regarding um, CCS in, um, in our state. And this is the eligibility for the medical therapy program. So CCS applicants with at least one of the following conditions shall be medically eligible. Cerebral palsy as specified in Section 41517.382. <laughs> um, or you have these other conditions, whether it's Duchenne's, um, osteogenesis imperfecta, ataxia. Next. Now, if you're under age three, and this is where the confusion comes from, um, who's, who's eligible? You know, you will see a child that has a concern, a delay, and we will frequently get a referral for, for this, this child, and you may be confused now, who, who's eligible for the therapy program? Um, your, your confusion is not well-founded, as you'll see. Um, so they say that for, for children under three years of age, they'll be eligible when you have two or more of these findings. Exaggerations of the primitive re reflexes, increased deep tendon reflexes, abnormal posturing, hypotonicity. Ah, now that's the case where we see these kids in their low tone. Um, with normal or increased DTRs and infants below one year of age. But however, infants above one year of age must meet the criteria described in A1. Next. Or, you have to meet the definition of cerebral palsy. Now this is a definition that not all neurologists agree with. This is just how the state has defined cerebral palsy. So you have to have one or more of the following, rigidity or spasticity, Oh, you have to have low muscle tone with normal or increased DTRs and exaggeration of primitive reflexes. Involuntary movements of choreoathetosis or ataxia. 